Good afternoon, everybody. As you can see, continuing on from our turning Tuesday, we're going to go ahead and do the mill turn part of this kind of casted piston. We did do actually all the outside turning on this part in op one, or actually in setup one. So let's go ahead and as if our C axis on our sub spindle is able to clock position, let's go ahead and create our tool pass to, to do any of our milling from that casting mentality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a brand new setup. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say secondary spindle. I'm gonna flip my Z axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that Z axis. So I just click the tip of it to flip it the other way. I am gonna go over to my stock. We do have from proceeding and we always do love some continuous rest machining. As you can see, it now brings through everything that we've turned on the front side and now it's just leaving everything on the back side. Now we did do this as a solid piece of stock. Had we had a model for a casting, we could also utilize that. However, it's not really gonna affect much of what we're gonna do here with this cross bore on both sides and being able to cut those actual grooves for snap ring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by actually just boring out those cylinders on the sides. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to milling. I'm gonna say 2D bore. I do need to set my Z axis. So again, we're gonna go tool orientation. I'm gonna use the inside of my cylinder and then I am gonna flip that cylinder so that we're pointed the right direction for what I wanna do first. From here, I'm actually going to select the face that I wanna bore. So as you're seeing here, as I'm picking this face, but there seems to be a problem. And that problem is, is because the actual hole is broken, we can't bore that out with that cylinder face. Now, what I can do though, is I am lucky where this lower face has the ability to do something as well. So let's go ahead and grab a tool. And let's go ahead and reevaluate this. So we're gonna go into my shop crib and I'm gonna pull a half inch flat. Hopefully it's plenty small enough to make it in there. And it definitely is based off what we're doing. So again, looking at that is by selecting that upper face, we are actually able to use that profile. The same with the lower face as well is if we actually click both of them, we'll get both of those profiles all in one shot. The problem is gonna be is the break in between the two. So let's fix that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click that very, first upper cylinder, and then I'm gonna set my whole bottom, and we're gonna go ahead and select, and I'm gonna select the bottom edge here. And then as always, we're gonna go ahead and offset this a little bit so we can punch that through the bottom. That does need to be a negative number. And then we can bring that tool path down past the bottom profile. So as you can see, we came in, we actually did a bore all the way down to clean that out. Again. We would need things, in this case, we would wanna go ahead and do something along the lines of leave a little bit of stock here, because we may wanna ream all the way straight through or use a boring bar, and we're gonna set that up here in a second to make sure that those are on center. So, another thing I'm gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and adjust just how we're doing this bore. So as you're seeing, we're going all the way down a good old fashioned helical bore. I'm gonna go over to my linking tab, and this is where I'm actually gonna change it from a simple lead out. We're gonna go ahead and say lead to center. Now this isn't a big deal at the end of the day, but it can make a very large difference in what it is that you do. Again, as if we had a pre-drilled hole here that we could very quickly go in and avoid, that would also be a possibility. So now that I bored out one side, I'm gonna go ahead and bore out the other side. So I'm gonna very quickly just duplicate. I'm gonna edit this one. And what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and flip our Z the other way, and I'm gonna pick a different face. And then again, we do need to change our heights. So our bottom edge this time is coming from this side. And as you can see now, we're boring back the opposite way. Again, being able to leave material so that we can come through with a boring bar and hit that all the way through. So let's bore that all the way through now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go to a drill tool path. And this is going to be for what is going to be a either ream, like I said, or a boring cycle that is going to allow us to bore down and open that up. So I'm going to go ahead and select my tool. And what you're going to notice is in the world of Fusion, there's not really a boring tool, so to say, on the milling side of things. However, we can build one out. So go ahead and pick our boring tool. You're going to want to set your diameter. And for the sake of this, I'm going to go ahead and plug mine in at one inch. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it just as such. And as you're gonna see based on our profiles again, so if I use this upper hole face, first we have to orientate, of course. So let's go ahead and select our Z, flip our Z up. 
And then from here, I'm going to pick that whole face. Now, what I want to do is I want to bore all the way down to the other end of this. So we're going to go all the way through from model top to model bottom. So let's go ahead and set that model top all the way down to model bottom, creating that boring cycle that we're going to dwell at the bottom. Now, there is a couple of different cycles you can do here as well. So there is a stop boring, which is going to stop your tool, then retract. Again, fine boring. There's a lot of things that you can actually do with this. I'm just going to do a standard boring and not a bore milling. So we could have did the actual bore milling here, but we had a different tool path for that. So let's just do a standard boring cycle with a small dwell at the bottom. I didn't program a dwell and you guys can, but that's going to guarantee those two holes are perfectly in line with each other for when we actually have to put that pin in there. So from this, let's go ahead and now cut our nice little snap ring groove. But before I actually cut that snap ring groove, I'm going to pause here because I'm going to actually want to put this hole in at some point. Now I'm going to mill this hole and I am going to do this basically as a standard bore again with a much smaller tool. So let's go ahead and measure that with our inspect tool, I'm grabbing that edge. And as we can see, it's an 064 diameter. So this is going to get a little warm and fuzzy when we get in there. So let's go 2D bore. And we're going to go ahead and pick our Z axis again. So let's say tool orientation, flip our Z. I need to pick my circular face, which is this guy right here. And then let's go out and see what we can get for a tool. So there is a very, very small milling tool inside of Fusion. I don't know if we're going to get down small enough. We do have an 0625. And in the case of that 0625 being so tiny, our helix is going to be very, very tight and small. So we may even want to go a size smaller if we were doing this. But the reason why I'm doing this as a bore is because it's allowing me to start in the gap that's already open and helical down and machine that pin out. Now, I'm also doing this so that when we come in there with that boring bar, we don't have to worry about an interrupted cut, which can cause a lot of problems at the end of the day. So again, we went ahead and did that bore on that cylinder. Once again, is if I had another one on the backside, I do, I would repeat that down and around to the backside. So let's go in and now let's cut that T-slot group. So the first thing I always need to know is how big is that kind of T-slot? Well, in this case, our distance between is 059. So I need an 059 T-slot cutter. So let's go for a 2D contour and see if we have an 059 T-slot cutter in Fusion. If not, we're going to go ahead and build one. So as you can see here, the actual diameter, flute length, and corner radius, we might be able to just steal one of these and modify it. I actually like that 3 8 one pretty good. Let's look at the half-inch one. The half-inch one, I believe, would work also. And we know so because we put a half-inch tool already inside this hole. So now this is a trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the lower contour edge. And because I didn't set tool orientation, as always, we have that problem that it's orientated the wrong way. So let's go ahead and readjust. And as you're seeing, we're now coming in and going out to the lowest point possible. Because in our Heights tab, Fusion always wants to go to where you selected that contour. So why not play that to my advantage? So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And what I'm going to do is we're going to take a quick peek at this. But I am actually going to simulate this cycle right here to see what happens with it. So for the sake of this actual part, we're going to have to adjust our boring bar also, which is not a big deal. And I'm going to go ahead and change out how we're looking at this based on a comparison. This lets me know if we're causing any collisions anywhere. But as we come down into that hole, we can now step out. And it looks like my lead in, my lead out actually played out to my advantage. But one thing that is happening because of that large bore here, if I get my model turned off, it's not really giving me the most clear definition of what's happening with that tool. I also need to adjust that tool. So we're going to do quite a few things here in a short period of time. The first thing I'm going to do is just to make my life easy, let's go ahead and throw in here a section analysis. And what that section analysis is going to do is we're actually going to cut a opposite direction, allow us to see the inside of that bore and what that tool is going to react with. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kick that analysis on. Another thing I'm going to do is while we're here, let's go ahead and measure our bore. I'm going to measure both of these and see if there's any distance difference. There is no difference between the two. They are both the same size diameter, but they're a 943. So let's go in and adjust our boring tool. And we're going to change that out from one inch to 943. 
And just like that, our boring cycle is going to update. And now we should no longer be causing any cutting of the model or any red. Now, our actual tool for cutting our T-slot, we're going to edit that guy as well. So let's edit that tool. And what we're going to do is, in the case of my T-slot cutter, there is no corner radius. And I, if I remember off the top of my head, the actual size of the T-slot itself was 059. However, I might have to adjust that again. And then our shoulder length needs to match that at 059. And let's see what we get. So I'm going to measure this again, guys. Can't always remember everything when you're doing this, right? So we can pull. So it was 059. So we're spot on. That's working great. I do need to regenerate that tool path as we're seeing over there on the side. So let's go ahead and regenerate. And then let's simulate this again. So again, based on our simulation, we're going to go ahead and see how that tool is interacting. And again, we can see this in real time. So let's slow this down. And what we're looking for is any type of collision or any type of problem. And just like that, we went ahead and went down into that bore and we actually cut that snap ring groove. Very simple. So from here, one other thing that we may have to do or we may have some concerns about if I get the analysis out of the way is cutting the actual flats between centers so that that isn't floating around all on its own. Again, this is something that is going to be special to each and every one of you and your application. But if I did have to mill, say, flats here, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go in again. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab just a 2D contour. And I'm going to grab a, what do we have here? Let's go for, again, a half inch flat tool. So let's get that half inch flat. We are coming in on our Z, the correct direction. So all I need to do is give this a chain to use. Now, what I'm going to do here is if I try to pick this chain, notice how it's the whole thing. However, if I hold the Alt key and I just pick one segment, I can actually initiate just one little segment and then pick that chain a second time, allowing me to extend it out. So I'm going to do that one more time. Again, this is a pro tip here is if you just hold the Alt key and pick one edge, it gives you one segment. And now I can extend that out to what I want. And just like that, we've created that length on both sides. Now, my height side of things, again, usually you want to select the bottom contour. However, my contour is slanted and it might be a little finicky here. But what I'm going to do is I am actually going to use a selected contour, or not a selected contour, I apologize, a selection point. And I'm going to move that down to the bottom of my lower bore. And then I may offset that a little bit or whatever my actual tolerancing and my feature callout looks like is how I'm going to utilize that. So again, as we have that ability to go down and mill those two flats inside of there, again, don't pay too much attention to my stock model because my stock model is representation of when we actually did this of a solid blank versus a casting. So with that being said, as you guys can see, it is very simple to go in and create all those features for the mill turn side of this actual piston. Again, I may need to take some of this stuff as in when we did that small boring cycle, rotate it around to the other side after we've gone in, actually bored out that part. But it is very simple to be able to use Fusion 360 to create mill turn profiles, even on, as I like to say, semi-complex or semi-cool parts. With that said, as always, guys, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You guys know Phil Brown over here at CAD Cam, and we're always here to support you in any way possible. So if you guys have any questions about this or want a custom demo, feel free to shoot me an email with the link below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. With that said, have a great rest of your day.